Today we have a brand new Canon R5 Mark II, and we're gonna show you how to set it up for wireless FTP. If you're familiar with the R5 menu system, this is completely different. In fact, it's a lot closer to the R3 menu with a few additions. My guess is this is the brand new menu system that's gonna be used in the R1. The most important thing you need to know about this camera is this. If you wanna use FTP, you have to use the new battery. The Canon LP E6P battery is required if you wanna use communication settings. When you put any other battery in the camera, you get this warning right off the bat. And when you go to the communications menu, it completely is grayed out. You cannot use it unless you use the new battery. I don't love that, but it's what we have to deal with. So stock up. The good news is this, the new menu is a huge improvement. It's easier to set up and it's much more efficient when you're actually in the field trying to make changes to your settings. What you're gonna to need to do is set up your Wi-Fi network connections, which are called COM settings, and your destinations, which are called function settings, in different menus. Each of those menus has 25 slots of presets that are allowed. To actually use your system, you need to pair a connection and a destination together in the new connection settings menu, which lets you save 20 preset configurations. I recommend you first set up your network settings and destinations manually, then you can pair them up together in the connection settings menu with the change from list feature. That will allow you to choose your settings off the list versus having to run the setup wizard for each configuration. In this video, I'm only gonna go through what you need to do in camera to connect via FTP to PhotoShelter. If you haven't set up your PhotoShelter account for FTP transfer, you can either watch our video on how to do this in the link below or read the instructions in the PDF document we've also linked below. You can use any FTP site, but we're gonna use PhotoShelter for this demonstration. So you're gonna to go to the network settings menu, which is the purple menu, and click enable, and then go right to manual settings. First of all, we're gonna set up our communication settings, which again, is our destinations. I'm gonna choose the first menu and click create with wizard. You're gonna configure online, hit okay. Wi-Fi, hit okay. And then what it's gonna do is search for available Wi-Fi networks so that you can connect to one of those. Anytime now, camera. All right, so right here I have a router that we use and it's called Wi-Photo 11. So I'm gonna choose that and I'm gonna enter the password. And then hit menu for okay. Hit okay. And then IP address setting is gonna be auto. Hit okay. TV, TCP IPv6 is gonna be disabled. Hit okay. And then there you go, you've saved the first connection setting. I'm gonna hit okay, and it's right there. Shows on the side that it's wireless. So I'm gonna hit the menu button to back up and switch over to function settings. I'm gonna hit the set button to go in there and choose the first mode. Functions is a really weird thing to call this because it's essentially the destinations where you're gonna be sending the photos. So we're gonna choose create with wizard, FTP transfer, hit okay. I'm just gonna do FTP. And right here, I'm gonna change the address setting. For PhotoShelter, they do, the address is ftp.photoshelter.com. But whatever FTP site you're using, enter what that should be. ftp.photoshelter.com, and then you're gonna hit menu for okay. The port, number, the port number should always be 21. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Passive mode should be enabled because photographers should be passive. Proxy server is gonna be disabled because I don't know what it is. And then this is where you enter the FTP site username. And then we have to enter the password. And then you hit okay. Target folder, for me, I'm just gonna go with the root folder, which is just the main folder that the destination has. And then there it is, it's set to mode one. So I'm gonna hit menu, and now the both of those, the comm settings and the function settings has been entered. So we're gonna go back to connection settings and change this to connect. This is where we marry the two settings together. So I'm gonna choose set one, and I'm gonna create from list, because we already have entered the information. I'm gonna name this setting, and I'm just gonna name it something that, that's helpful for me, so like football. Just so I remember to use it next time. And then I'm gonna choose my function setting first, select from list, I only have one on the list, it's easy, it's that one. And then for my communication settings, I'm gonna choose select from list, I'm gonna choose that, that uh, router that I set up. 
I select that, and now I hit the menu button, and then at the bottom left corner you see this connect button. That's what you have to do is connect and hit OK. If you push the play button, you can go back into your camera and look. On the top left hand side of the frame, you see that there's a wireless uh, signal. And then there's this box with set. When you hit the set button on your camera, it will transfer the photo. And now if we go take a look at file flow, when I go into live gallery, oh, there's the photo of our crew working really hard. My camera is always set up to shoot RAW plus JPEG. The RAW is what I'm going to edit off of, but for FTP, for, for, for social media, immediate stuff, I'm sending a small JPEG. I like the S1 JPEGs because they're just about the right size that you get a lot of quality, over 3,000 pixels, but it's still a pretty small file, one to two megabytes. You're going to be tempted to send RAW files with FTP. Just don't. It will bog down the system and it, it will be very inefficient. Send JPEGs, they'll be just fine. If you're in a place that doesn't have a very good signal, you can, you can make the size of your JPEG even smaller just so that you can FTP it out. And that's something that I do from time to time. I'll have my camera set between level six and level eight small JPEGs. There's just a few more settings I want to go over. Um, first of all, if you're ever having any problems, this error detail interface will give you, it'll tell you exactly what's wrong. And it's really helpful and this is much improved. It'll tell you if you have a bad connection to your FTP server or if your Wi-Fi network's not working correctly. That will help you when you have problems. Going over to the next menu um, and click on transfer images to FTP server and go down to FTP transfer settings and this will give you some options to do. First of all, it's going to give you the option of doing automatic transfer. That means sending every single photo that you take via FTP. And trust me, you don't want to do that. We're always making selects of the specific photos we want to be sent so that our social media managers can quickly pull those and put them on social media. On the images to transfer menu, you can choose what to send. And for me, it's always going to be the larger JPEG if there's uh, multiple files like heap files or JPEG files. I like to have transfer with set enabled. That means that what I'm using to send the photos is the set button on the back of dial of my camera. I also turn off, I, I leave power saving disabled because when you're sending a lot of photos, sometimes the camera's going to be one attempted to kind of shut down and you need to keep it active. And then I'd leave disable on protect images. Another thing you can do is confirm your details and run through and look at your settings just to make sure everything is correct. If you choose, you can add a caption to the photo so that when they're sent out, they already have a basic caption. Maybe you just want to have your name and your contact information on that. Another thing you can do is use this image select transfer dial. If you want to choose a bulk amount of images to send, this is a good way to do it with this interface. All right, that's it. You should be set up and ready to go. Now, if you do run into any problems, you may actually want to check out this PDF that we have down here in the description. That will take you through every single one of these steps to make sure you didn't miss anything. You can also send us a comment with any questions that you have and we'll see what we can do to help you. But thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the sidelines.